Hello, welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I'm losing my favourite game. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss Resident Evil! Welcome to Raccoon City, which released in 2021, written and directed by Johannes Roberts. Yeah, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well, the year is 1998. We are following Claire Redfield, played by Kaya Scodelario. She is heading to Raccoon City to find her brother Chris and uncover the mystery behind Umbrella and what it has for the city. Can I help you? So this film was announced even before Resident Evil, the final chapter was actually in theatres, so yeah. that was kind of like rejoicing. I was just like, yes, it's being rebooted. I'm championing a reboot. I don't even know who's making this reboot yet, what's going to happen. Yeah. It's, uh, but uh, it was uh, Greg Russo who was originally signed on to uh, do the, the reboot, to write it. Yeah. And James Wan was going to be the director. Ah, and yes. So the two of them were collaborating on this, this reboot. But uh, they both left the project and ended up working on Mortal Kombat, which obviously came out two thousand uh, 2021 as well. Yeah. And so when they left the project, it fell into the hands of Johannes Roberts, who was just like, it's fine. I'm a huge fan of the games. Yeah. I'm also a huge fan of John Carpenter. Yeah. So I want to incorporate my influences, such as... Assault on Precinct 13 and right. Fog, yeah. which are these siege movies where these random assortment of characters come together at the end to help fight off against, you know, whatever's attacking them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was really excited for this. I was like, <laughs> this all sounds great. You know, he said he doesn't like the Anderson films because they're too action orientated. Oh, yeah. And he wanted to okay. bring it back to the horror and the suspense of the game. So I was like, you're ticking all the boxes that I want to hear. And then the promotional material started to come out. And yeah. we started to see the still images and everyone went, Oh God. I've seen cosplayers in better <laughs> stars outfits than what's in this film. This looks really cheap. Yeah. And then the trailer came out. What the? And we had that wonderful song that had absolutely no bearing on Resident Evil whatsoever. I'm just like... <laughs> yeah. And then the film came out. And this was during the pandemic as well. And so the theatres, most of them were closed down, but they were like, we're delaying this film. It is releasing in theatres. It's not going to streaming. You must see this in theatres. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah. I'm still, I'm still, I don't think I'm quite over it yet. <laughs> no, no. I bought it on DVD, which I knew, I knew at the time was just stupid. Like, why? Why was I buying more into this franchise? I've already gone through, what, seven films up to this point, plus X amount of games. You know, I've watched fucking anime, fucking CGI, Netflix promotional films that have been coming out. I just keep... I just keep feeding myself to this franchise, but you know, I know people who are fans of them, and so I was just like, screw it, I'll buy the film. And I bought the film, and I sat down, and I watched it, and I got all the way through, and I hate myself. I hate myself for buying it, I hate myself for watching it, I hate myself for even just being associated with this franchise. Like, even when, even when you'd even said about it being a remake, coming out at, at the time I just didn't want to talk about it mm -hmm. like why are we still talking about Resident Evil it's not working at this point I've got what a, a seven film series with Paul Anderson a bunch of animated movies this film and a Netflix TV series and we've just finished a Netflix TV series but we're not talking about that at the moment we're talking about this film and I'm surprised this is actually the best live action adaptation of Resident Evil to date. Well, that's not saying anything at all, really. No, I know. <laughs> it's not really saying anything at all. I know, but, but that's what we're going with. Because, like, this director, I looked at his backlog and I saw that he'd done this film called F, which is a horror movie about a group of hoodies that go into a school and kill a bunch of teachers. It's very low budget, it's done well, and 
like you said, it's got the cool motif of John Carpenter kind of hints in there. Um, I don't know where he's hid them in this film. Well, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I mean, I was excited for this story because I quite liked 47 Meters Down. It wasn't the best you shark movie shark at all. Movies. But it proved as a director, like, with very minimal kind of effects and budget, he was able to capture some suspense really well. Yeah. So I'll say, like, if, if anything you get from 47 Meters Down, some good suspense. Um, but so I was, I was, the only Carpenter-esque thing that I see in this film is the aspect ratio <laughs> and, and, and John Carpenter's font <laughs> being yes. used. Yes. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Why have you got to put those timestamps in? They're fucking useless. Yeah, they are. They make They're no fucking sense. useless. They just make no sense. They start, and at one point, I swear, they jump like two and a half hours. Like, we have them like every 30 minutes. Yeah. And then they jump two and a half hours. That's bad. Um, again, we start off in the orphanage. We have Chris and Claire Redfield living in the orphanage. I didn't know this. Well, after nine games, I mean, I know from my, my own memory is that, yeah, um, the, the Redfields lost their parents early on. And Chris really? looks after Claire. He I raised did... Claire, essentially. But, I, you know, it's, no, it's not mentioned anywhere that they were both raised together in an orphanage. So no. that's entirely this film's doing. Like, but it's a way to shoehorn in character moments to set up now to have payoffs later in the film which don't really pay off in any meaningful way anyway yeah so this film is decided now i'm just going to get this say this now i am a huge <laughs> avid resident evil fan yes, so yes, all of my yes. comments coming at this film come from someone who loves the games yeah not someone who's impartial and just sees this as a movie but i see this as an adaptation of the games and yeah. so i'm going to judge it as that yes i i still think some of my criticisms of this film could be landed on it as it was just if it was just a standalone film not based on anything as piss poor filmmaking anyway yes. yeah um because it's incoherent and it's a mess um structurally narratively totally. character wise yeah. tonally everything it yeah. is a mess and um and so Having having Chris and and Claire here now, all it does is to set up this this thing with Birkin, where when Claire comes to visit Chris later on, she's like she sees pictures of Chris and Birkin, and he's like, yeah, Birkin <laughs> raised me like a dad. He yeah. is my oh, dad. Oh man, I hate that moment. <laughs> but I mean, we also have like just like our introduction to the Birkins as well. We see Birkin at his at home, and 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 Sherry is having nightmares about this monster that's chasing her. And I'm just like, but that, yeah, but that's not like until like halfway through the movie. We're still in the flashback. This is still like yeah. pre-1998 where Chris and Claire are in this orphanage and we have Neil McDonoghue playing Birkin. Like, he's a great actor for bit parts. Like, he signed, he's never he been signed anything his, too good as he is. Well, he keeps signing his name onto checks, which I just think are just there for money. I think he's uh, better than, than the things that he's played. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, I see him as a good Birkin. I don't know if that makes me a bad person, but he's, he's creepy and ominous standing there giving us this, because he's got nothing to work with. And we <laughs> say this a lot of times, don't we? Actors work best. Sometimes when they have nothing to work with. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, it depends on how good the actor is. Yeah. Now, yeah. This has caused me back to something that, that Johan said as the director. He was just like, right, call my cast. And they're all playing these parts from these video games. And the cast want to know how to play their parts. And he said, well, you are all the characters from the video games, but you're also not. You're also who you want your character to be. Oh, you God. need to bring yourself into these characters to make these characters shine because the games don't have characterization so you have to bring it um, and and, so, and I, I don't know whether that's the cause because all these actors went well if i'm supposed to be this character why am i written this way so do you want me to continue to but just like the paul anderson movies that's what like the original claire did didn't she she was told to go out and play the video games so she went out and played the video games and then came back and that was the claire we got and we were like <laughs> really this claire this claire is kind of the same all you have to do is get a girl with dark hair and a red jacket you know well, walk I around mean, with a gun in her hand and it's claire claire in resident it's, evil 2 is a 19 year old the claire in this doesn't look 19 oh, she, uh, what know? age is she well, I don't, oh, we, we don't know I, and like visibly they've dressed her well uh for the part but at the same time like claire is really emotional and supportive and uh and this character is just cold and cut off and uncaring yeah like she's She's left Chris at some point from the orphanage. Like, like we've had the, like I said, the setup with her talking to Lisa Trevor, 
and don't get me started on Lisa Trevor character, but like this is now supposed to set up that Birkin is evil and Umbrella is bad. And she says that she's left the orphanage. She left Chris and she's been traveling the world. And while she's been traveling the world, she's uncovered that, oh no, Umbrella, which has been running this town for how long? Forever. Fif forever, <laughs> 50 years, 100 years, because at least the woman in the fucking diner, she actually says, this is my hometown. So she was born fucking here, and Chris and Claire must have been born here, but, she, you know, she's left, but why? What caused her to leave? Well, the, because it, he was going to experiment on her? Exactly, and she managed to escape, didn't she? She ran out. Yeah. So. She she ran she ran out you know and that's it and so it, he's it, it it gives off the the impression that Chris is supposed to have been experimented on by Birkin but it's never actually revealed it's hinted slightly yeah. but never revealed because everybody drinking the water in Raccoon City is being slowly infected um, especially yeah. the incident that happened a couple of days ago <laughs> one incident. <laughs> exactly well that's it somebody reports well but Ben doesn't he Ben's been sending yeah. information to Claire and he reveals that everybody in the town of Raccoon City over the years has been slowly experimented on by Umbrella because Umbrella owns everybody it's in the fucking water um this whole town's been poisoned slowly over years and years and uh, people are getting sick and I'm like, that's not how towns work. Like, I bought the ones in Paul Anderson's easier because they were just a pharmaceutical company. They yeah. were hidden and they built the town up. This this umbrella, they own everything. The police department, the rubbish men, yeah. the, the postal ladies. How? Well, I I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm kind of confused now between the Netflix TV series where it is a whole town built by racket by by. Uh, well, that's it. Umbrella. Yeah, yeah. These all these programs kind of mix them all together, but starting with Claire driving into the town, we do get the truck driver. Yeah, oh, well, the I mean, but that's what this film does. It's like, yeah, I'm a huge fan of the game, so you're going to see thousands of Easter eggs from yeah. from the game. So I'm like, yeah, but without and context, no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. You focused on all the wrong things. <laughs> so getting a gratuitous close up of this cheeseburger as he eats it, I'm like, yep, yeah, <laughs> that, that was in the game. That was in the game. That was in the game. It's just that's what this film feels like. But it doesn't feel like it got beyond the surface level. No, it didn't. Exactly. Of yeah. What we see visually in yeah. the games. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's just. I mean, it's... this this bit with the truck. I've got to say, I've got to talk about it. Oh I've yeah, I mean, it's it, it, it. It. <laughs> he drives. Claire, Claire's hitchhiking into town. He's giving her a ride. He's got a Doberman, and straight away you're like, oh, it's going to be one of the Cerberus dogs. Whoa! But he's he is he is lecherous and disgusting, and he yep. puts his hand on Claire, and he doesn't see because there's a storm and rain. There's a zombie in the road. So and much he hits rain. It. So much rain. So much rain. <laughs> He hits it and he goes wandering down. He's like, oh, I couldn't have seen it coming. What was she doing on the middle of the road? And the Doberman bursts out of the cab and starts licking up the blood because the zombie got up and walked away. Walked away. It walked away. It walked. It got up and it walked, ladies and gentlemen. And like, it was lying there one minute and it was infected. And it got up. And not only does it walk away, it stands in the edge of the woods and stares at Claire. <laughs> Like, why? <laughs> this is so stupid. Like, is it is it because it's too early in the movie to have a zombie attack? <laughs> just, just it, it baffles the mind. Yeah. And so, yeah, we see the Doberman eating the blood and get back in the cabin. And then a bit later on, we see him, you know, with with the dog. And the dog's, like, like drooling. Oh, it's got green. Wait, don't, don't, don't spoil that bit yet. I, I want to get to that okay, point. Because okay. once we get Claire into the city, you know, we've like we said, we've established that Birkin is bad and Umbrella is here. And the t and we even get that title card. Thanks, movie, for giving us the title card. Just in case we still didn't know what Umbrella was doing with Raccoon City. Well, the title card explains, like, the reason why there's no zombies in this movie. It's like, everybody already left town. <laughs> yeah. And if they haven't, they're leaving already. So don't expect too many zombies. Yeah, yeah. Now, this film apparently had... The budget was, like, four times what it eventually was. Sony kept going, yeah, we're looking at the, uh, the income takes for final chapter and budget's cut. Oh, look, everybody's really not liking Resident Evil. Your budget's cut. No. Oh, uh, you're not really new. You're pretty new to this franchise. Your budget's cut. Yeah. Oh, COVID's around, so budget cut. Ooh. And so that's why our zombie hordes later in the film are reduced from thousands to like four. 
Yeah. And because of COVID filming restrictions, they had to... They, and because of budget cuts, apparently there was so much more that they wanted to put in the film that yeah. just kept getting cut and cut and cut and now, cut. Which is frustrating, annoying, aggravating, and yes. soul-destroying if you're a director who has a vision. But you should still be able to piece some stuff together to make it coherent. You, you can. And and that's what I've got to give this director and this film. And this is why I stick by the it's the best live adaptation of Resident Evil that it is. Because with... The moment that it was in, the you know, the, the world was in lockdown. And unless you were clear and you didn't have COVID, there was no way you could have a group of people in one location. You're trying to film a film and you can't have people in one location. You know, it's it's more than just a, the stars. Ha, stars, see what I did there. Um, like this Dinah sequence. Like, they, they, they've got all the stars members just sitting in a diner. Just... Having breakfast, lunch. I don't know. It's it's late at night, early in the morning. No, late at night because it's going to go past midnight. And on this, this is my second viewing of watching it. The first time I hated it. I didn't want to watch it. The second time I'm like, nope. Here we go, movie. Show me what you've got. And I got actors. We've got Tom Hopper, who plays Wesker from Umbrella Academy, funnily enough. Yeah, he was also in uh, uh, Black Sails. He was fantastic as Billy Bones in that. I, I really elevated. I was like, this is a great actor, but he keeps getting, like, I mean, it's just, this is, he's not Albert Wesker. He, we, he's, I mean, visibly he could if they dressed him right, but like when you see him in that flannel shirt, <laughs> yeah, Wesker in a flannel shirt, laughing and joking. <laughs> it, gets, like, it gets better. Cause he's Jill's girlfriend, ladies and gentlemen. Jill Valentine's got a BFF. <laughs> it's Wesker. It's not Chris. Because no, obviously Jill and Chris don't get together. Silly. Aren't you a fan of the series? This is Wesker and Jill show. Okay, so pretend I don't know anything about all the Resident <laughs> Evils. Okay, I was going to pretend because otherwise I cannot fathom this oh, relationship. Oh, oh, and it gets better. Look who's just woke up. Oh, Leon. Leon's woke up. <laughs> yeah, I'll call it. Oh, are you ready for this zinger? <laughs> Hey, you snooze, you lose. What? It's Jill Sandwich now. It's a Jill Sandwich now. Oh my God! It's it, this, it, it this whole this whole scenario. But, but wait, it... we're missing some members of Stars Team. Mm. Chris, who's missing? Barry, where's Barry? Well, I'm sorry, but he's probably. No. No, Barry Burton! Like, seriously! Turn the film off! I, I'll i be honest. Turn it off! I'll be honest. I thought the kind of ginger bearded goatee guy was a thin Barry until later on in the movie where they, it's where Richard they, Aiken, where they yeah. call him Richard. And yeah. I was like, oh, oh, it's Richard. Shit. You know. Yeah, why no Barry? If you don't have a Barry, it's not gonna work. It's... There's no Rebecca Chambers. What? Well, there's no Enrico. Enrico! <laughs> there's no Forrest. No Joseph. Oh, there is a Forrest. There is a Forrest there. <laughs> I mean, this is Bravo team, ladies and gentlemen. These two fucking <laughs> donut-eating, coffee-swigging cops walking in is Bravo team. And they've just announced that they've got to head up to the Spencer mansion because somebody's found a body. Oh. So wait. Somebody rang the police station and said... Excuse me, there's a body in the mansion, in the mountain, outside of town. What were you doing there? <laughs> <laughs> I sat there reading the notes like, this is the best script you've got. These two bumbling fucking cops are going to drive all the way out to the mansion in their little squad car <laughs> looking for a body. Shit all to hell. Yeah. Okay. And these stars members, because we don't actually even get told these are stars. They just work for Chief Irons. Right. They never mention stars. They don't break it down. These are just a group of detectives or whatever working for Chief Irons. Chief Irons, played by Donald Logue, who's a cool actor. You might remember him as the guy from Blade who got yeah. his arm cut off. Yeah. You know. He is so annoying in this film. He and is so kind of overacting in, in yeah. this. He just shouts all of his dialogue. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> hey! Okay, Chief, what's this all about? Yeah, let's be alarmed. Uh, well, if y'all shut the hell up for a second and listen, maybe you'll find out. What the fuck are you doing here, Leon? <laughs> you sent everyone into the briefing room, so here I am. I didn't mean you! 
You moron. I want you dressed in five, all of you, and ready to fly because I want to know where the hell Bravo team is and what the fuck all those alarms are about. You got me? Clearly some bad shit. And not only that, like, Chief Irons in this is just a misrepresentation of his of his Gary, character from the games. They are all like, misrepresentations no, of they, the characters. They really from are, the but game. the thing is, it's like they they the thing that annoys me is that Chief Irons in this film gets so much screen time. <laughs> That's the thing, because this film has so many characters, because they're taking Resident Evil 1 characters, Resident Evil 2 characters, putting them into one movie, they're giving us the Birkin family, they're giving us stars, they're giving us... There's, you know, there's... It's, it's, it's annoying because characters that are the star of the film, like Claire Redfield is the star of this film. Like, she is the pivotal one who's kind of driving the story along. However, hmm. Leon Kennedy is also sort of the film's... Quasi-main like, star, because it's Because we, we follow him from his first day, from his hangover to the, to the, the diner, you know, into Raccoon City RPD. And so he's like our, 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 our guide through through Raccoon City, because he's new there too. But, yeah. he, but so these characters needed some character development and focus, not following Burke in... Spending loads of time wandering around the car park, barking orders. It's just like if you're gonna have, if you got sorry, if you're gonna have yeah. Chief Irons be in this film, yeah, like give him the traits from the games, give him the weird creepy factor of but the dead mayor's daughter, they give him the creepy factor of stealing they children. Couldn't, they couldn't have any. They couldn't have any of that because they couldn't have any of the locations. Look at where they but, go. They go from the star's office, which is just the diner but changed, to then his office to pack up his stuff. To the front of the fucking police station, to the armory, which is you don't see any other police officers, and the armory is empty. No, no, that that's the thing, and that's like the police station. Like when you see the aerial shot of the the the, the town, yeah, the the police station is massive, massive, and they've got this giant car park. They've got helicopters, yeah. And I'm like, and there's three police officers and stars, yeah. And, and it's, it's like, what well, did everybody leave town too? Just like the beginning a, intro said, because it was a COVID. Where's outbreak. Marvin? Uh, uh. Hang in there. Don't worry about me. Co Who the fuck is they Marvin? Should Marvin. They should have had a Marvin all the way through. Marvin and Leon working together would have been great. But Damn yeah, I, I said, I'm totally with you, man. I want to fucking hit on this so badly as well. Here's the other thing I wanted to bring up. Okay, When we see I'll the front here. of the RPD police station in this film, I was just like, jaw hit the ground. I was like, that's fucking beautiful. It does. It's stunning. It looks the amazing. rain, yeah. the lighting, the mm -hmm. atmosphere, the mood, yeah. the music, yeah. the camera slowly sweeping in. I was like, that's yeah. great. We get into the, the, uh, the, the entrance hall, the reception hall of the police station. I'm like, that's great. You got the big statue in the back and the desk at the front. Yeah. I'm like, wait a minute. In the games, this was a converted museum that was being turned into a police station. Yeah. What's this film's excuse? There isn't one. There isn't There's one. No it's just a no really large building that and they've so got in Raccoon City. I appreciate that Capcom gave the filmmakers all the blueprints so that they could recreate the mansion, the Spencer Mansion. They could recreate the police station, yeah. you know, to scale. <laughs> yeah. if they wanted to. Yeah. But they didn't. Well, they, they kind of built a part of it and then green screened in the rest. Because of budget cuts? Now, I also just think, like, when you... It, it looks so odd when you don't explain things in the film. When you go from this grand entrance hall and then you go to Chief Iron's office. <laughs> is just this wooden panel shoebox and, and I'm like look at Chief Iron's office in the games look at it in this movie I'm yep. just like it's so you, poor it is and you spend like five seconds in there as he gets his stuff and he's like fucked off because Claire right we've, we've gone all over the place so just to just well, to find anchor, anyway. <laughs> just to find anchors Claire's turned up into town she's trying to find Ben so that she can find out the information he's recovered about Umbrella because there's been this incident a couple of days ago she's looking for her brother Chris who's out hanging out with the stars who are going to be heading up to the Spence Mansion soon she heads to their house and she breaks in because Claire's the <coughs> master of unlocking in this and she looks over at the neighbours and the people of Wrecking City are supposedly supposedly have been infected over time by whatever virus and they're just Bolding. And Chris just never noticed the, the look no. of his neighbours ever. <laughs> ever. Like, ever. Well, I oh, keep drinking happened... this bottled water, not tap water. Well, that's so it. Fine. That's it. We're now establishing because Chris and Claire have this terrible fucking acting sequence now where they're brothers, brother and sister, they hate and love each other because she walked out on him and he doesn't believe her that Umbrella's banned, blah, blah. And, and the, the girl playing Claire, Kaya Scadalario, you know, she's, she's as good... As, say, the guy playing Chris, Robbie Amell, 
and that's saying something. They're good actors. We know they are. If you wiki them and look at their back history, they've got some really good acting qualities underneath their belt. So when you look at them in this film and they're selling you this story and it's so bad, I feel kind of good that I'm being sell, sold this terrible, terribly told story. Because in a minute, when the action sequence starts, itchy, tasty written on the glass and mama fucking mutant zombies at the door you know and the kid comes scuttling underneath the table like shh and yeah. it's the whole I'm, i i like a bit of fan service okay <laughs> i like a little bit of fan service when it's subtle when it's when it's built in or even even if it's this super fucking hit you over subtle. the head obvious with it <laughs> do it a couple of times that's fine that's great that's callbacks that's makes me feel like a part of the franchise okay i don't mind it too much i don't but when it's overdone or when it's put in without context yeah that's when i I get irritated and agitated and frankly pissed off. <laughs> she screams it. Why are they talking? <laughs> Why are the zombies talking? They've not fully zombified yet. And is so that right? now, the thing is, like itchy tasty, it makes sense in context to the game because yeah. it was a scientist, he was keeping a journal yeah. throughout their time in the mansion. For a zombie or a half zombie or a turning human to just walk out into the road and write itchy tasty on the glass in blood, it makes no sense why they're yeah. writing that. It, yeah, makes, no it sense, makes no sense. Other than to have a cool moment in the trailer or, or yeah, for the fan give service. Off that she's, now, yeah. it is a pretty cool shot where she does just kind of run through the glass window at Claire. Stunt girl. Yeah, well, it's still, <laughs> it's still a pretty scary moment. You know, mm. it's uh, like a running zombie. It just takes you off guard anyway. Yeah, cause yeah. You're just, Expecting shamblers. Uh, but yeah, she ends up tussling around and she ends up escaping and gets on Chris's motorbike. You told her not to take it. Yeah. And then rides off because towards Raccoon C fan RPD. Fan service. Fan yeah. service. She's on the bike. You know, and, and we are cutting back to, to the police station. Chief Irons has had his little sequence. Like, the town has kicked off. Like, the power is being cut. The fucking alarms are going off. It's, it's Silent Hill. This is the Umbrella Corporation. For your safety, please stay in your home and await further instructions. Weirdly. Yeah, it's telling everybody to stay home. I'm like, who? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone stay home. The city is now in the lockdown because blah, 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 Raccoon City. If you don't know it, then, then then read a book or something. And stars are just sat around their fucking office like, hey, chief, what's going on? I'm like, uh, guys, the fucking... Hands on a complete lockdown. Yeah, we're all having fun, you know, me and Joe relationship. Leon, you could, Le, Leon's even got his party banner in the background. Yeah. So it's like they're 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 posting the fan service that they're fucking doing the game. Yeah. You know the the party. But they treat Leon like an imbecile, and that is because well he, he is, is an, imbecile. an imbecile. He is. He has been, I think of all the characters, I think he has been the most assassinated in this film. Yeah. Especially, like, Leon, for a lot of Resident Evil fans, is one of the favourite characters. And to see him so yeah. mistreated is insane. Now, like, I understand, like, I, I also feel bad for some of the actors in this film because they got a lot of criticism landed at them racial stuff character stuff that's I'm uncalled like, for I'm like, i don't mind no. if if you if you race swab or if you what what you do so long as the character shines through the performance i'm happy with that yeah and that's not what we get with leon here now granted he's supposed to be hung over and disheveled yeah. and but to the fact that he gets yelled at and screamed at that he's bungling around that he doesn't know what he's doing the fact that he ends up passed out yet again at the reception hall of the rpd while this huge fireball explosion <laughs> goes off in front of him yeah. and he's still sleeping through it until a gunshot goes off when Chief Iron shoots the walking zombie, the flaming zombie. Now, a Jesus <laughs> wept movie. Did you uh, uh, did you even look at this effect when it was done and just did you just sign off on it and go, we can't waste any more time on this? Because this is one of the worst effects in the film. I mean, not only is this scene dog's comical, worse. not only is this scene comical yeah. and the fact that Leon's asleep and he gets woken up by a gunshot just to cement his stupidness, like and you wonder if this film is trying to be funny intentionally or not. The fact that that zombie, I call it a zombie, the shape just strolls yeah. in. Like like arms. Why? 
Yeah. It just looks like a businessman going about his day. That doesn't, like, no zombies walk around like that in the entire film. No. So why is this zombie that's I... on fire walking in that way? Just... It, it boggles the mind. Yeah. Now, Leon is now aware of zombies and monsters and stuff. And he puts it out and he's like, yeah, I don't know what's going on. And, and I will get to my frustrations with that a little bit later when he encounters <laughs> Ben, who, who he has to go all the way through the car park to get to. The Ben sequence. Oh, God. <sighs> but the music, the music in the Flame and Zombie sequence. I, I only got it for this second time of watching the movie that the music in this film is fucking completely shit. It's the wrong it's the wrong choice. But I feel like maybe the director purposely did it to shaft the studios because he kept getting shaft. Like the first sequence with Claire, she's in the truck. It's uh, was it the cardigans? All this, all oh, the music. Oh, sorry, you're talking about, oh, you're talking about the actual uh, songs. Yeah, yeah. The songs. I, I thought the actual music in the film was really good. Well, the, yeah, the the, the creepy horror esque kind of Resident Evil yeah. type music. Yeah, it's, but also it's the kind action of stuff was. Yeah. Uh, the the music is uh, the the actual soundtrack music itself. So specifically from 1998, which yeah. I didn't get the first time round. Yeah. But then I'm I like the first song with Claire. I'm losing my favorite game, you know, uh, by the Cardigan. I I laughed when I heard that, and I'm like, oh my god, he's he's doing this on purpose. Yeah. And then this sequence with the flaming zombie, this th th this song, like, why you would even fucking contemplate putting that in a horror movie unless you wanted the audience to, to laugh. laugh. Yeah. And the audience who can't laugh at a flaming zombie if it's screaming, shouting, running. So you've got to have it walk. <laughs> and it just Casual fucking like. ruins everything for the character of Leon because Iron just walks in and goes, bang, what the fuck are you doing, man? You're fucking asleep. And Leon's like... Bah, 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 bah. That's, that's Leon all the way through the movie for this movie. Jill walks up to him like, hey, Leon, how you doing? Bah, 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 bah. Well, until he gets the rocket launcher at the end. That, that's it. Spoilers, he gets a rocket yeah. launcher. So he does end up going to... Uh, he ends up meeting with Claire, at, 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 who is met with uh, Ben, who, who gives the information, like, yes, I was trying to unveil the umbrella has been poisoning everyone in Raccoon City, but they managed to lock me up. But I'm also in here with a zombie. Oh, Oh, so, uh, so Leon, blatant. you need you need to so let me blatant. out, Leon. You need to let me out, Leon. You need to let me out. Leon's like, no, I'm not gonna let you out. I'm not gonna let you but out. But he ends up wandering up to Ben, and Ben ends up grabbing hold of Leon, takes hold of his gun, yeah. and points it at Leon. Like, now you need to let me out. Now you need to let me out. And we have the sequence, yeah. Now so the dialogue here is atrocious. Like Ben knows what a zombie is. He tells Leon, I'm not gonna get taken out like that because I know what's going on. Have you ever heard of the T-virus? The G-virus? Uh, of course you fucking have it. Well, it's a virus that genetically modifies the DNA of a living cell and it's turned these people into fucking weapons, ma'am. He has a gun. He is in a room in a cell with a zombie and guess what happens? You'd think you'd shoot the zombie! Because he knows and he's just told us he knows. I would have just had Ben get eaten by the dogs in the car park. We could have just done that but no. We have this whole sit down sequence where as the audience member you just know the stove zombie has just stood there. It looks nice. Gory on the mouth. But even Leon doesn't kill it, does it? Fucking Claire, well, Claire comes has in to and... come in and kill it. Well, Claire doesn't even kill it. Yeah. She incapacitates it, and yeah. then it gets back up again, and he unloads his fucking gun into it like nine times. Yeah. I mean, this is also after Claire has just saved Chief Irons, Chief who, like Irons. I said, was wandering around the car park being chased by the Doberman, and she managed to kill it with a fire extinguisher, only for Leon to step out and go, put the gun down! Yeah. So it's a fire extinguisher, you moron! You fucking moron. <laughs> Alpha Team has been dispatched to the mansion as well. And, and they've landed uh, near the upturned police car of Bravo team. And uh, Vickers is played by uh, Nathan Dales, who uh, you might remember from uh, Letter Kenny, which is quite a cool Canadian comedy. Um, when I saw him in this, I was like, this is ruined. This movie's kind of ruined because he's... He's he's a he's a cool comedian. The character he plays, and in this, he's just nothing. He's just the helicopter pilot, and he'll die. Um, but they get they 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 find the body. Uh, well, they 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 come across the upturned car, don't they? And they start making their way, and they come across the mansion, and it is so blatant CGI. There's less CGI in the game than there <laughs> is for in the fucking for for this TV this movie. And they walk in, and and Wesker. Um, Wesker's character has been given this device 
to get to the mansion and find something and get out. And it's like you're talking about um, Leon's assassination. What about Wesker's? Wesker is a good guy, bad guy, good guy, bad guy, good guy, bad guy, good guy. <laughs> because that's but because you know he he's he's there helping the team. Oh, we're gonna split up. Jill, come with me. Well, the fact that Al Albert Wesker's not even the captain of the team. No, <laughs> Richard is. Yeah. Like, what, what, what kind of weird universe is this? And Wesker doesn't even doesn't know what he's looking for, or who he's working for. It's all about the money. That's yeah. that's it. It's just about the money. And so we've also you've also recently just seen William Birkin head into the lab. He, he's trying to get his family out. Annette is useless. Annette Birkin is Shh, fucking yeah. <laughs> Worse, she might as well just be in a clipboard. Yeah, she is a shadow of her former self. A shadow. <laughs> um, and so he's heading to the lab because he's got to get there because uh, Umbrella's just going to steal everything. Blah, blah blah blah. You know Birkin's character anyway. Wesker is heading through the mansion and he's got Jill with him, and he explains to her like, "Yeah, um, I'm just doing this for me. I love you." Or right, does, does he tell her he loves it? No, he doesn't tell her. But she acts like she's really heartbroken that not only is he betraying her. The betrayal. The betrayal. <laughs> betraying her, but betraying, you know, Chris as well and the team. And just, just every, the, te the people of Raccoon City need you, Wesker. Like, like this actress tried. She's no Jill. <laughs> whatever, whatever we want Jill to be. She could have been a Jill. Like... The best adaptation of Jill, for, you know, dressed as Jill in a mansion, I suppose. Um, but she happens to look out the window as as Wesker is playing Moonlight Sonata. <laughs> Listen, do you hear that? <laughs> what crazy wacky universe am I in that yeah, Wesker yeah. can play the piano? Oh my! Wait, doesn't he actually has the PDA which tells him which keys to press? So, yeah. yeah, and he only hits a couple of notes, and then the door opens, not to get the you know the crest, no, but a corridor all the way to the to the, the labs. labs. Yeah. yeah, well, that's it. Actually, yeah, actually, think of that. So Claire is looking to an elevator to get to the Spencer Mansion. Yeah, from the town. Yeah, that's one hell of an elevator ride, and he's. <laughs> Climbing up this tunnel, which is taken into the underground lab, and yeah. it's fucking huge because it cuts back to him later, and he's yeah. still running. I know, I know. <laughs> it's like, okay, movie. Okay. You just need shortcuts everywhere to explain how Lisa Trevor can also be in all these places at once. <laughs> yeah. So that so the, so the helicopter crashes because Victor well, yeah, is attacked. He gets a the zombie jumps through the window, and then yeah, he crashes through. Well, we had the helicopter crash into the police station in the second game. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so now we need it to crash, and into we'll kill mansion. Brad off now because well, Nemesis isn't around to do it anyway. It's it's pay it's kind of paying cool homage there, which I kind of like the helicopter crash. And the death of Brad. And we've then got the zombies outbreak. Now the zombies in the, the mansion are definitely a hell of a lot better than the zombies in the town. The thing that gets me yeah. is that we are way into an hour into this film, right? Yeah, yeah. We saw a zombie in the first ten minutes getting hit by the truck. We've seen yeah. the zombies now outside the RPD. We've seen the weird ghoulish people. Yeah. And uh, and now we, we are over an hour into the film. We're following stars. We're walking around this mansion. And the film's like, suspense time. I'm like, we've already had all these other action scenes. Suspense is over. And so when they're creeping around, like, oh, what's that? Oh, what's that? And we'll go, oh, the zombie's going to slowly turn around and have uh, that iconic moment like from the, the beginning of the game. Yeah. Yet now it's inserted halfway through and beyond in this film. And I'm like, it doesn't have the same impact. Like, no. if this was the first zombie we saw in this movie, awesome. Yeah. Because it's not, this moment is pointless. It's absolutely pointless. Not just as fan service, but as a way of telling a story. It's it's, it doesn't work that way. It's the simple basics of escalation. It's like thinking about it. I think you just talking about that whole opening sequence there with the zombie. I could, you, I could easily just move that bit at the beginning of the movie, move the whole raccoon uh, yeah. alpha team going out to the mansion and then having Claire and Leon meeting up in a second part of the movie. There is like a whole, feels like there's a whole hour and a half just missing so that they could just slot these two it, it, bits together. It's like something I wanted to, to say at the beginning work. was just like if you wanted to do a movie, do Resident Evil two and three the game. 
because that's all in the Raccoon City and the police department, you know? Yeah, but you, you don't need to have Birkin or, or well, you, you kind of do. You kind of do. Yeah, but you, you don't, kind of sorry, you don't, you don't need the mansion. Like, the mansion could be its you own You don't need movie. Lisa Trevor at all. You don't need Lisa Trevor. She's, she's redundant if you're doing two and three. And yeah. she's kind of redundant if you're doing the story of the Stars team and the, the betrayal of Wesker. Well, that's it, like, she the Resident Evil 1 anything. has, like, that perfect escalation of... First we see the you know the the zombie, then the dogs, then the crows, then the snake, then the plant, then the then you know it, it just keeps then getting bigger betrayal, and bigger. Then the yeah, tyrant yeah. and that betrayal as well. Yeah. It's so, so so following those characters around that environment, it will it will work in a film if it's done right. It is fundamentally a haunted house movie. It is the bare basics of horror. Yeah, yeah. and and they fucked it up. Yeah. And, again and again and again and two really works because it's already happened it's already happening we come into it not oh we've got to establish it all you've got to see all the fucking little bits to get everything go we we don't so so wesker's left uh jill jill's really upset she's gone and rescued fucking uh chris because you get that whole battle sequence don't you chris comes across the first zombie comes across dooley yeah. His buddy who's been eaten. Richard goes off and gets eaten by about 15 fucking zombies. They come out of nowhere. Yeah, Literally, it's, it's so It's annoying. worse than Anderson's. Like, at least Anderson had the build-up of, like, they've turned off the power, they've reset the computer, that's unlocked the zombies. These ones were just hiding. Yeah, just hiding. Until it went dark to, to a, yeah, dark now, to a certain now point. Now, there's a sequence here that I'd like... The, the strobe lighting oh, the effect of, 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 the of Chris room. fighting. Oh, I, I hate it. I was like, I can't fucking can see horrible. what's going on. It's no, really it's annoying. Horrible. It's bad doom. action scene. Real bad action scene. I thought, like, I mean, like, the, the Rock Doom, like, POV shooting yeah. sequence was much better, better. than this. Yeah. Better, yeah. Like, fucking hell. Yeah. Now, the thing that really annoys me with this bit is like, oh, Chris has got a lighter. Oh, <laughs> God, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, that's that's fine. Chris does have a lighter in the he game. Does, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. But it's the fact that when he, the light, the, the flame is on and we see the zombie coming towards oh. him going, rah, 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 rah. The, when, the, when the flame goes off, the not start. only does the music go away, but the zombie goes, Oop. Until the light goes off and then the, zomb the light comes on and the zombie's gone. It's, it's like, it's I could have eaten you in gone. the dark, in yeah. silence, but I'm, yeah. I'm going to run away now. Yeah. And He's... then I'm going to jump scare you right out of nowhere. I'm like, this is not fucking zombie behavior no. in any of the games. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> he should have been... Dead. For this second, for this <laughs> second viewing, I realised he was hiding underneath the dining room table. Yeah, yeah, well, it's so bad. So I've never seen underneath the dining room table, but here we go. And Jill turns up. She shoots the zombie. She's just like, Wesker's betrayed us. And Chris is like, Oh my god, really? She's like, Yeah. I, I did like this. Like, there's a little bit of weird fan service here. I don't know how well connected you are to the games, <laughs> but um, there's a. a, a, a a, a, a subgroup of people that like to believe that Wesker is actually really infatuated and kind of gay has a bit of a bromance with Chris or would wish for one to happen. Who Yet in again? this in this film, they ask Chris like, "What would he choose between the snake and the thing?" And he's like, "Oh me, I'm going to die as an old man in the arms of lovable Wesker." <laughs> You're a freak, Valentine. Plan on dying peacefully in bed, snuggled in Wesker's big burly arms. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Me too, brother. Oh. <laughs> and that's it. When she talks about the betrayal, there's kind of a hint of, oh my God, in his eyes. I can't believe he would do this I can't to believe me. he would do this to us. Like, that's just terrible. And we've obviously, we've cut back to um, Claire and Leon who fucked up with irons. They've decided they're going to go to the orphanage because there's an entrance to the labs there. Uh, when they get to the lab, when they get to the orphanage, they're going all the way through the city, right? You know, because I was making notes. I was making notes of the timestamp. There's actually a timestamp that comes up 1.50 a.m., right? Then we have a little sequence involving irons and the dogs and the bad CGI. And then um, it cuts to 2 a.m. So literally we go for a 10 minute time jump, right? 10 minutes. And then there's this whole sequence of the mansion. Then it cuts to 2.29 a.m. timestamp. And we're at the armory. The armory is fucking bare. I'm like, why are all these fucking timestamps? Then you go through this, all this other stuff. And then there's a 4 a.m. timestamp. Like, why? 
<laughs> you literally went 10 minutes, half an hour, now it's your hour and a half timestamp, and they just kind of walk into the fucking orphanage. Like, by this point in the movie, I, just, I was really wanting to give up. I kind of almost wanted to turn yeah. off. But I, I kept reminding myself, look, they keep paying homage. They keep paying homage more than anything else you've ever fucking seen. Don't you enjoy it? And I'm like, yes, okay. Because when Claire comes across Lisa Trevor, like she did at the beginning of the movie, and they're like, friend, friend. She's my friend, Gary. You friend. have all the keys that you need. <laughs> all of the card keys. So you get the club and the diamond and the spade. And uh -huh. here's the secret entrance. that will take you exactly where you need to go to the secret labs. Irons is killed off. He's pulled off by a tentacle. Kind of like in the game. Depend on which scenario you're playing. Uh, no, it's just cheap here. It's yeah. really cheap. Well, they like, kill him off. He bit. has a really gruesome, gory death in the original and the remake. And here he's... Killed off screen and his corpse is dropped down. Who's got the worst kill? Him or Ben? They both get it brutal. Like, really brutal. Yeah, but, uh, like, worse is in comparison to the game. Like, they could... Like, well, Ben either has the parasite burst out of him or he gets his skull crushed from Mr. X or... You know, and 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 and, and uh, Chief Irons is the same, like torn in half or a parasite yeah. bursting out. Yeah. They're both grim and these, horrible. These two are really. And terrible. they both get it shit deaths in this they film. Really get shit deaths. It's like because no then the liquors turn up, and the liquor these liquors do look worse than the first time we saw liquors in Resident Evil, the other movie. I don't think it's, I don't think the CGI was too enough. bad, but it what, was. In this? Yeah, I don't think it was too bad. It just I did I don't know. It just didn't glisten enough. It like. Resident Evil 2 Apocalypse liquors look better than the ones Yeah, they did. This. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's like at least 10 years before. These these look like they were done well, but they weren't tidy enough. Um, and and, and, they, and they, they end up sorting them out and heading off to the mansion. Now, Wesker meets up. Well, 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 well I mean, the liquor's there. And yeah. but Lisa Trevor fights the she liquor does. one oh, on shit, one. Yeah. And she rips the bottom of his jaw off. <laughs> so, I mean, that's... Yeah, I, I, like, I don't, like some of the effects looked a bit blurry around her 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 restraints as she was doing it. I was yeah. like, I don't know what the focus went or something, but yeah, she kills it. I was like, when the corpse hits the ground, I was like, that's a pretty gory effect. I she like that. She doesn't do that in the game, does she? <laughs> no, she she doesn't. No. <laughs> I mean, there's no liquors in. She should totally her. do that in the game. Yeah. Like that would make her such a badass more character if she started killing off shit in the game. But <laughs> but she does. Yeah, she gives them the entrance. They head off to the, uh, to the um, lab, wherever the lab is, from the mansion to the. To the orphanage but well, what... they're going all the way yeah to the spencer labs yeah from the town in an elevator but like, okay you're gonna be here for a while wesker meets up with birkin and he's just like hey i need the vials in there and birkin's like who are you and he shoot they shoot each other yeah and so i already kind of know what birkin's gonna do because it's birkin he's you know neil donald mcdonald he's gonna inject himself with the fucking virus and become a tyrant because well we fucking need a tyrant we haven't got one we fucking desperately need one and wesker ends up killing sherry's mum <laughs> well she was really a character anyway no but yeah. she wasn't she she doesn't do anything <laughs> after this right but but wesker's injured and he's dying and he has this whole dying moment with jill when he pulls the gun on sherry doesn't he and he's just like i need to i, I need to take this stuff and then, um, and the kids then got the gun on Wesker. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then the Jill. gunshot goes off. You think the kids killed Wesker, but it turns out it was Jill who shot him in the back. And Wesker's like, oh, Jill, you and that gun of yours. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have shot your kid. I'm a really an okay guy. She's like, oh, my God, Wesker, you're going to be okay. Wesker! <laughs> Jesus, Valentine, you and that fucking gun. <laughs> Hey, no, 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 we're gonna get you out of here. No, 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 Jill, I fucked up. I'm sorry. I wouldn't have pulled the trigger, kid. No, 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 no. <laughs> Stop it. Wesker, you're pitiful. So Wesker dies. At least he didn't die to a door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I've... I've seen Wesker die to a lot worse. Yeah. Um, and 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 they just they just leave him there, and they decide that obviously they've got to get Sherry out. You know the 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 whole lab. Is, well, they they've already been told as well that the place is going to be destroyed by six a.m. You know, and so obviously that's obviously a, a, another reason why we've had all of these terrible timestamps. And we then have this fight sequence between Chris and the tyrant, 
Birkin now, which is kind of reminiscent to the first game with him like not being able to go in a certain way and telling Jill to go on, you know, you know, um, and him having to hide around. But he, he, he shoots him in the face, doesn't he? Uh, well, yeah, Jill turns up and they just all start blasting him and... And he dies. He, he well, yeah, like <laughs> it's it's reminiscent. I remember now because they shoot him in the eyeballs, and the eyeballs. Are well, he hits him in the head with a. Sh oh yeah, they shoot the eyeballs off him. Yeah, yeah. but they also shoot him in the head with a shotgun until so he, he goes down. But he down. mutates again, and of course, it's Resident it's, Evil. It's the Resident boss keeps Evil. coming back. Yeah, they've got to chase him now to the to the train, and they they get to the train, and they start to make their way out, and we realize well the mansion collapses in on itself. Right. Which is weird. It's supposed to be a an explosion. <laughs> it's different. It just kind I of suppose. sinks into the ground. What was the point with the cow? I mean, they spent all that. Well, that was when, yeah, when cow. we see the city also exploding. Like, I don't understand what this explosion is because, like, in the games, it's, it's a nuke. This... Well, I and in it's... this, it's like we see a shock wave. I think it's the lab underneath the city kind of implodes in on yeah, itself. Yeah, it, so, it, so everything's whole... falling down on it. That's what itself. I'm getting. Yeah, but it's again, it's just like. Why don't you just nuke it? Yeah. Surely the nuke effect is going to be just as easy to do as whatever it is we're doing here with the flying cow? Yeah, well, and just just to make sure that you don't forget how close we are to the end of the movie. Here's another timestamp, 5.55am. Like, we have five minutes to get onto the train and get out, <laughs> you know, just in time. And and the yeah. whole everything starts collapsing and Birkin turns up. And we're like, oh my God, what are we going to do? Because nothing's going to work. And Leon's got a rocket launcher. Yay. And he shoots it at point blank range and they all survive it they all survive just like it. they both survived the helicopter crashing right next to them in the mansion yeah. they survived this this explosion here and they all get to walk out of the tunnel together and now they can finally go and finish off umbrella <laughs> mid credit sequence though we do get wesker waking up and he's been brought back to life by umbrella i'm assuming but he's been brought back to life by fan service. Yeah, he's fan service. <laughs> and his eyes really hurt. So guess what? He needs sunglasses, just like the Wesker character. And there's Ada. And she walks off. Ada, wait! <laughs> God damn it. Oh, uh, end. Uh, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not sitting for it again. <laughs> Have you got any favourite sequences? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a funny thing you should say that. I, for the first time, I think ever, really, I have a list. Mm -hmm. uh, things that really, really... I, I, I couldn't contain myself. I was getting so angry and frustrated. I, I had to grab the nearest piece of pen and paper and start scribbling down. Otherwise, I was going to be like Cheryl from the Evil Dead. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. that. <laughs> just like, join us. Join us. Uh, right, so, I mean, th this is just a selection of things that really annoyed me uh, in this. So, John Carpenter's font and credits annoyed me already. But yeah. It didn't annoy me. They kind of annoyed me in retrospect because of how shit everything else was. You made John Carpenter's credits and put him on a shit movie. That annoyed me. Yeah. Uh, Claire Redfield as a child uh, encountering Lisa Trevor. Like, it's just put in the movie to set up a scene where she can point them to the labs later. Friends. She actually has no other purpose or relevance. It's just another another character from Resident Evil game shoehorned into a movie and not explored, not adapted well, not not given any kind of progression or development or anything of substance. So it's there, and then we wave as we go on the elevator. Bye, Lisa Trevor. Bye. See you never again. Friend. The truck driver scene, after he's hit the zombie and the zombie just walking off into the woods, <laughs> it absolutely <laughs> boggles the mind. Uh, the Raccoon City being an absolute ghost town because of a relocation. And it's like... <laughs> It's just a really poor excuse to say we've got no zombies in our zombie movie. Wesker in a flannel shirt and the fact that he's a prankster. It's like, this is not, not my Wesker. The fact that it foreshadows the snake and the shark mm. and then doesn't have them in the movie. It's like, you don't foreshadow that shit that we know is in the games and then not put it in the movie. What would the worst way to die be? What? be swallowed whole by a snake or eaten alive by a great white shark <sighs> jill sandwich now <laughs> like okay it's a great little moment but eventually i think it, it still annoyed me yeah virus is spread by water not by rats yeah stupid annette birkin is nothing like her character she's not even a character in this she is just a walking cardboard cutout yeah. of, a, of a character itchy tasty and blood on the window no need for it 
uh, Birkin almost crashing into Claire in a comedic midsection passing. I'm like, the town is deserted. And just on this intersection here, the two leads end up crossing paths and yeah. staring at each other like, do I know you? Did I raise you? Did you escape from my labs? Do I hate you? Did you raise my brother? I don't know. I'm going to drive off now. Bye. Bye. It's just like... <sighs> the casual fire zombie just strolling through the RPD while on fire. It's Abs- just a, a little crush. A- Chief Irons, what, what, putting him in the film for as long as he is and then just not really using him at all? No. Nope. Terrible, terrible. Yeah, terrible. Where's Barry Burton? <laughs> Come on, movie. <laughs> Thumbs down for no Barry Burton already. Uh, the Leon character, the amount of stupidity that this character goes through. He is dragged through the mud and we're expected to like him at the end because he saves the day. It's not my Leon. <laughs> not my Leon. The uh, killing Brad by the helicopter crashing into the mansion and having Jill and Wesker that were right there just miraculously survive by going, <coughs> I'm fine. <laughs> what? Terrible. Uh, yeah. Leon getting mugged by Ben in the cells and losing his gun to him at the same time. <laughs> Ridiculous moment. Yeah, and Ben saying, yeah, I'm done taking chances in a cell with a zombie. <laughs> Stupid. Oh, Ben. The piano room door now unlocks a secret passage to the labs. Ridiculous. Wesker wanting out of this town in this dead-end life. Like, <laughs> yeah. It was just a way of getting out of this... this small town, dead-end life. <laughs> I just want money, Joe. I just want money. I'm not really a bad guy. I just want to get out of this town. <laughs> I'm sorry, Joe. Uh. Chief Irons having a shit liquor death. The Chris strobe light horrible action sequence and the lighter bit was awful. The dually zombie after Chris that just crawls out in the dark. <laughs> the, 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 the moment where Claire comes across an old projection and puts on and starts watching footage from... Uh, oh, the Ashford fucking the twins. The Ashford twins, the yeah. The Ashford fucking twins. Yeah, and the fact that Wesker and Birkin are also complete strangers in this. Yeah. Well, like, they're not. They've been, they were working together like Resident Evil Zero and earlier. Yeah. And it's, it's just like, it's a complete misunderstanding of the games. It's like, you've played the game and you saw all the things that were in there, but you didn't pay attention to any of the other stuff that really mattered, just the superficial stuff. The, uh, so, yeah, favourite scenes are the visuals of the RPD and the Spencer Mansion, the external shot outside, the establishing shot, and the reception rooms. Because when you go into the police station, you get that reception room, but none of the other rooms in that police station you will recognize from the game whatsoever. Mm. Not even the star's office, nothing. No. Same with the mansion. You have that that one room, that, that foyer, and then all the rooms that they go into look nothing like the rooms from, from the game at all. At all. You might see a, a picture, a painting on yeah, the wall and go, well, that armor, was or, or, or but, but the layout, when yeah, when, when, layout when, when just, Wesker's yeah. got his, his, his pilot pal yeah. and he's got the map, and I'm like, that's not the map from the mansion either. Yeah. Oh, great, you've put a herb in the background over there and you put a typewriter in the background over there. Yeah. That's not storytelling. No. You know, that's just that's just set background, dressing, which yeah. is fine. That's, some of the set dressing is good. And then you go to Chief Iron's office and you're like, the set dressing in there is terrible. The star's office is terrible. So there's some of the visuals I really liked. I also thought that the music was pretty effective for a horror movie. I thought it was creepy. Yeah, the the children kind of singing the beginning. No. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's horror movie. It's it may not be Resident <laughs> Evil horror movie music, but it's, it's well, horror yeah, music that kind of works movie. and the action music fits. But yeah, the songs take you right out of the picture. It really, really does. <laughs> And contra- I'm contrary to you, I-, I actually thought that Lisa Trevor, even though she shouldn't really be in this, I think she looked really good. And the actress portraying her did a pretty good job. The The makeup effect was really good. The creepy mother's face and the, the stitching and the tears. The only thing that was really missing from it was the tentacles that keep, you know, popping out of her. <laughs> it's yeah. not, not in this version. Uh, but uh, yeah, that was, that, was, that was really it. I don't really have too much to say in the good side of things. Ian, no. do you recommend... Uh, the movie. Do you know, sadly, I do. I do recommend this movie um, because, as I said, it is the best live action adaptation of the Resident Evil games to film as to date. 
I've sat through seven Paul Anderson movies, a bunch of animated movies, and a fucking Netflix TV show. And this is the best we've got. We've got Chris and Jill and Leon and Claire and Wesker, Mansion, a police station, some zombies. <laughs> You know, that's Resident Evil. Like, yeah, the story. We definitely need story and we definitely need everything else. But that's like, that's that's where you want to go. If I, if I want to go, I'll go play the actual game because that's where I'm, you know, choose between playing the first game on the PlayStation with no memory card or a fucking watch Welcome to Raccoon City again. I'll play no memory card, you know, and live the story all over again. But then again, if I want to go to a submarine pen place underneath the fucking Russian ice with Mili Okovich, then I'll go over there. You know, if I want to see new Raccoon City with the the, the black Wesker, I'll go, I'll go see the new Wesker. This one, I've got Tom Hopper. Okay. <laughs> I could only recommend this film to to those that like horror B movies. Yeah. You know, with monsters and zombies, you mm. may get some enjoyment from this. It's not truly awful. No. As as it has a few good moments. I would say, for being generous, it's average at best. Yeah. But if you are a fan of the game series, then I advise you to never watch this adaptation. <laughs> it will do nothing to wash away the crap left over from Anderson's Resident Evil franchise of films. He's not wrong. In fact, it may just do the opposite and make you appreciate the Anderson films more. <sighs> Sing it, brother. I was incredibly excited for this version and I'm deeply troubled with how this mess came to be, especially after all the promises that this would be the faithful adaptation to the games. And in reality, it's not. Characters, stories, events, locations, all wrong off kilter it's a completely different universe so if you're a fan of the games this world would appear puzzling and perplexing and even aggravating i thought the cgi was average it wasn't truly awful it was average nearly all the classic monsters show up nearly really? the effects were nothing special they were completely lacking polish the performances were okay, but with piss poor writing, characterization, it was really painful to watch them. The cinematography was a highlight. Great atmospheric slow shots, establishing locations, music was also fairly good. They did a good job, as did some of the team dressing the sets. I wanted to like this more, but it just annoyed the piss out of me. I would never watch this again. I don't recommend it. Witness the beginning of evil. Probably also the end of evil too. <laughs> Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews. Clearly some bad shit 